Today I want to go through a pre-performance focus strategy that I believe is going to help you prepare more effectively for your performances, especially as you lead up to stage one and stage two. This um, strategy comes from the Bulletproof Musician, otherwise known as Dr. Noah Kagiyama. And he has developed his work or extended his work from um, Dr. Don Green, who did a whole heap of performance psychology, psychology for uh, athletes and ha it has been developed and adapted for um, musicians. Why do we need a strategy such as this? Why can't we just dive off the deep end and you know dive into a performance? Why do we need to think about um, how we're going to perform? Well, firstly, uh, Dr. Kagiyama points out the difference between control versus comfort. And um, did you realize that you think about 48.6 thoughts a minute? So if you have a five minute piece or even a two and a half minute piece and times that by 48.6, you're thinking that many thoughts in a performance. So it's really important that you learn how to control your thinking as opposed to just allowing your thoughts to be comfortable. You need to actually control and focus your thinking. And focus is something that you learn how to control. It's not something that you're born with and, and it happens innately, you actually have to learn how to do it. And to learn how to do it, you need to practice it. And that's why I am proposing to you that you apply this um, pre-performance strategy to your everyday practice routine so that by the time you get to stage one and stage two, it becomes uh, an innate and intuitive part of your routine. So centering is a focusing strategy. Now, why do we need to center? Well, it's all to do with left brain versus right brain. When you are using your left brain, you're thinking with words, numbers, logic, analysis, criticism, rules, details, planning, and judgment. And doesn't that sound like practice? That's what we use when we're practicing. We're often analyzing our playing and deconstructing it and trying to work out how to fix bar 28 and, and planning in our next practice session. So we're constantly in left brain. And I would say at this point in our musical careers, we're more often in our left brain than in our right brain, possibly. Now, right brain thinking is a lot more intuitive and incorporates sounds and images, patterns, the kinesthetic, the sensory input, the emotions, the big picture and creativity. Now, this is where you want to be performing from. You want to be performing from your right brain. So if we spend all of our time in our left brain, how do we get to our right brain for performances? And that's why I'm proposing that you incorporate this strategy into your practice routine so you learn how to flip from left to right so that way in a performance you're um, performing from your right brain. So centering. At first this is going to take a few minutes to do but over time as you get more effective and efficient at it it'll take a few seconds and oftentimes I use this while I'm performing. If I've made a mistake or if I'm sight reading and I need to stay calm, I will quickly flip to doing uh, this centering process to calm myself down and to keep my mind open. So what you'd like to do is um, select a focal point and something that's either your eye level or slightly below and um, the reason why you do that is that if you're using your left brain, if you're thinking, you're more likely to be going, hmm, and you would look up and that would engage your left brain, but you want to engage your right brain. So you're better off just keeping your eyes straight ahead or slightly down in order to engage that right side of your brain. The next thing is to form a clear intention. This needs to be specific and um, assertive and determined. So you don't want to say something like, I hope I will play the dynamics well. You want to be saying, I will play the dynamics well. I will, uh, I will communicate the dynamics with the proper intention. It needs to be a really strong affirmative statement. Even if you don't believe it deep down inside of you, you need to speak it, you need to say it and you need to focus your, um, bring all your focus to that statement. 
So you need to think about what's your goal for this performance? What's really, really important to you in this particular piece that you're playing? Because every piece that you play will have a different um, angle that needs to uh, happen in a performance for that piece to be communicated effectively. So if it's romantic and you want it to flow beautifully and you want those dynamics to be in there, then you're going to think along those lines. If it's um, it needs to be mathematical and, and absolutely exec, um, executed with mathematical precision, then you're going to be thinking about those rhythmic subdivisions. So form a very clear intention. Even if deep down inside of you, you don't believe it, you need to speak it nonetheless. The third step is to breathe mindfully. What can happen when you feel a bit nervous, and this would happen a lot to singers, is that you would breathe very shallowly and at your chest level, right? This is a little bit of a panic mode. Instead of that, you need to breathe using your diaphragm, diaphragmatic breathing, and that's when you're breathing really deeply. And what I do normally is I breathe in with my diaphragm and I kind of hold it and then I gently breathe out through my mouth. So I breathe in through my nose and I let my whole body um, fill up like a balloon and then I control it as it comes out and as I breathe in I try to take control of the nerves in my body I allow the air filling my body to kind of take control of those physical um, symptoms such as sweat and shakiness and nerves and as I breathe out in a controlled manner I'm thinking about that clear intention Right, so you find your center of gravity and um, your center of gravity can be where you see it or where you feel it. You know, it could be here. It could be where it is as a, uh, as a musician as well. Like, you know, with piano players, it's the way we sit on our stool and that's our center of gravity. Um, and so as an instrumental instrumentalist, where does that fit for you? But find your center of gravity. It could be also a way that you focus. It could be here, could be here, could be down here. So you want to find that center of gravity and just focus everything to that point. And really what you're trying to do is those 48.6 thoughts a minute that you're thinking, you're actually trying to quiet them down and become like one thought and that's your clear intention. So as you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and you're thinking and you're repeating your clear intention, you're focusing it in one centered point. I will play those dynamics beautifully. And then you repeat this. This is called a process. This cue is called a process cue. And the reason why it's called a cue is because it cues your brain. It flips you from left to right. And so oftentimes if I'm performing and I'm sight reading and I'm beginning to feel nervous because I've made a mistake or I've missed a beat or something like that, I will straight away, as soon as I breathe in through my nose, to kind of deeply to kind of calm my body down my brain straight away flips because I've done this often enough I've practiced this often enough that my body uh, it knows exactly what's coming next it's like you train the um, body to respond to this cue I've cued my body and so you need to practice this um, uh, quite a bit to to be able for your body to do it automatically so you just repeat this a few times so just to recap, you select a focal point, you form a clear intention, you breathe mindfully, you find your center of gravity and you repeat your process cue until you feel like you're ready to play. So how I suggest you incorporate this into your practice routine is do your practice, use your left brain uh, and do your practice and work on your pieces. Then at the end of your practice session, Take a minute or two, I think maybe two minutes at the beginning is plenty. Take two minutes to practice this and think of a goal. Whatever you've been working on with your left brain, let's say you've been working on the articulation, right? So now you're going to perform the articulation. You want to flip from left to right and you want to perform that articulation. So your um, clear intention will be, I will perform the articulation exactly as written or something along those lines and then take a couple of minutes to go through this process and teach you how to do it and then perform 
And when you perform, as you know, you don't stop and start. You're committed to that performance from beginning to end, come what may. And then that ends your um, practice session. And I'd love you to start incorporating this into your practice routine. I'd love you to start incorporating this in your warm up before your solo performance performances in class. And um, it would be great to see the impact of this uh, pre-performance focus strategy and how it helps you in stage one and stage two. Thanks for listening.